mnemonic. Hey everyone, I'm Uwa, I'm a 2020 medicine offer holder and welcome back to my channel. I've set up this YouTube channel, a website and my Instagram page to help aspiring medics. So if you're applying to medicine, be sure to follow me on my Instagram, it's at uwaisabot.com and subscribe to my channel for more help with your application. So to get involved in this, whether you're a med student or a doctor who wants to take part, or you're just someone who's curious and has loads of questions, be sure to follow me on Instagram and look out for my Ask a Medic posts. So this is my first video and the medic we've got today is Ezzy. She's just finished her first year at St George's University London and she's going to be answering some of your questions. So these are questions that you guys have asked generally for a medic and also questions that are specific to her and her experience. So on my Instagram by the time this video is out I also would have posted for the medics who will be featuring in our Ask a Medic series. Be sure to check those posts out, drop them a like and ask your questions. Also follow Ezzy on Instagram to keep up to date with her. I'll leave her name down below. My next Ask a Medic video will hopefully be out next Sunday, but for now let's hand it over to Ezzy and see what she has to say in response to your questions. Hi guys, my name is Ezzy and I've just finished my first year at St George's Medical School and today I'm going to be answering your questions about medicine, being a med student, the application process, all of that, so let's get into it. What would you say were the hardest and easiest parts of your med school application? I would say that the hardest part by far was the UCAT. When I started, it was called the UK CAT, so I'm sorry if I revert back to the UK CAT, but it was the UCAT because it was the hardest in terms of time pressure. I don't think I've ever sat such a time pressured exam before, so it was very, very difficult to study for every day because how I studied, I used to do a mock test every day and I would never ever finish the test, so it would just like dishearten me every time I sat it. So I would yeah it was terrible and it's assessing you on a lot of stuff that you don't actually get assessed on until you do that test i don't think i've ever sat a test like it before especially um i would say abstract reasoning was the hardest because even to this day there were some answers that i still didn't know why they were correct but um yeah i would say that was the hardest part the easiest part for me i think has to be work experience solely because if you're interested in the area going and seeing like the day-to-day -day demands of the job is actually quite enjoyable because you can just like envision yourself in the environment and everything i loved following the junior doctors around shadowing what they were doing so yeah i think that was the easiest part easiest part <laughs> which medical schools did you choose to apply to and why so i applied to queen's mary university of london king's college london st george's university of london and what have i mentioned UCL? Yes, UCL. So the reason why I applied to King's is that I really liked the location of King's, like right in the middle of central London. I also liked the course and then um, when I did end up going to interview, I liked the um, the vibe of the school, if that makes sense. And then for St George's, I liked that it was a hospital base campus. I liked that I would be surrounded by the multidisciplinary team and I also liked the fact that they have clinical placements quite early even though I didn't get to experience it but there was that. Now the reason why I applied to UCL was I also liked the course, I also liked the location, it was by in the middle of central London and the thing about Queen's is that for me, my number one requirement was that I stayed in London. So it was between Imperial and Queen's for me, but um, I chose Queen's because it was more favorable for the entry requirements that I had to offer sort of things. So I think that's important when you're looking for a medical school that look at the entry requirements, see what is fitting for you and yeah, go ahead and do that. What are the disadvantages of studying medicine at SUU? Well, um, I think one disadvantage is that it is nothing to do with the actual course itself but it's quite a small university and this can be an advantage or disadvantage depending on who you are but once you meet everyone on your course and oftentimes you'll know people in the other years as well that's kind of it like it, you don't really get that thing in university when you're meeting like a new person every day 
but that's all dependent on how much you care about that um another thing i would say is that it's in london but it's not like bang in the middle of central london and there's not a lot of monuments next to it i don't care about that personally but it may bother some people but yeah in terms of the actual course itself i wouldn't say there was a problem with it the slides are quite good the lecturers are quite helpful um yeah we have good anatomy lessons with the cadavers cadavers cada <laughs> the cadavers um yeah there's nothing wrong with the course itself it's more so the university depending on the type of person you are what did you wish you knew before applying to medicine and actually starting med school so um i would say i was pretty well researched before i started med school so nothing really surprised me off the bat but i would say that it just reaffirmed that there is a lot of content so when people say that don't take that for a joke because there is a lot of content and you have to get to grips with handling a large amount of content without them ever going back and refreshing you like you're going to do the bulk of the work there was nothing really else that was surprising per se yeah i think that's just the main thing there's a lot of content so yeah you really have to get your organization skills and revision skills um down packs very early otherwise it's a bit of a sticky one out of 10 how much would you recommend medical school so I'm gonna answer this in two different ways. If you want to go to med school and you love medicine, I would rate it a 10 out of 10. Reason being that um, it doesn't disappoint. Like you learn everything that interests you. You learn how to um, apply it to your practice, if you're lucky. Um, St. George's does that, so I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, and yeah it's just a bunch of interesting things day after day i can't say that i've ever hated like had a strong hatred for anything that i learned i find them all quite interesting um however if you are on the fence about medicine or that's not what you want to do and you expect me to sell it for you it's more of a um personal decision in terms of how much content you can handle because the content is a lot and you need a lot of discipline to juggle everything at once i would say but if you genuinely want to do it it's definitely not going to disappoint so 10 out of 10. what GCSEs and A levels did you study and what grades did you get? So I studied triple science so that is biology, chemistry and physics and I got an A star in all of them. I studied obviously maths, um, English and English literature and I got an 8 in maths and I got a 8 in English language and I got a 9 in English literature. I also studied economics and sociology and I got an 8 in both, an 8, an A in both of them um citizenship i got a b and media studies i got a c because i didn't really care about it too much um for a levels i studied biology chemistry and psychology and i got an a in biology a b in chemistry and an a in psychology what type of extracurricular do medical schools like um, I don't think you should be focusing on the type of extracurricular because I believe that they'll like any as long as you're able to reflect on it and tell them the type of skills you use during the extracurricular which will help you in medicine. For example, um, resilience, determination, um, all of those soft skills there. So yeah, it's not really about the type. It's more so what you gain from it and how can you reflect on it. Any tips for the abstract reasoning section on UCAT? The thing about abstract reasoning that you need to know is that there's obviously no content to study for. So what they want you to do is cultivate a skill. And the only way that you can cultivate a skill is constant practice. So really make sure that you're prioritizing practice questions as part of your revision, especially for the abstract reasoning, because that's the only way that you're gonna learn like their reasoning for the answers. Like oftentimes the abstract reasoning has really bizarre right answers. So you just have to get to grips as to, okay, this is, correct because this is correct because and the only way you can do that is with practice questions i know the medic portal does practice questions medify does practice questions there are some books that you can buy with practice questions also don't just stick specifically to ucap abstract reasoning questions there are many many tests out there that have that same sort of non-verbal reasoning 
questions. My entrance exam for um, a secondary school that I wanted to apply for had that sort of questioning style. So if you've exhausted all the questions that you can find, I can guarantee there are many, many more sources on nonverbal reasoning and abstract questions. Um, another tip, and this is more so for answering the questions, is try to find a mnemonic, you've probably heard about it before, but a mnemonic, mnemonic, mnemonic to um, really break down what you're looking for for each question. So the one that I used specifically was scanned, you've probably heard about it before, and that is shape, color, angle, slash arrangement, number of shapes, and symmetry. And that really makes sure that you've hit all the points that you're looking for when you're ever confused and you can't see the pattern straight off the bat. And analyze from the simplest box, obviously. Look at the box that has the least clutter in it just for you to identify. Also be careful of distractors as well, but yeah, use the simplest box and then work from there. To EPQ or not to EPQ? So I didn't do a EPQ myself, and clearly I'm in medical school, so I kind of had to ask my peers about their experience with the EPQ, and a lot of them mentioned that none of them spoke about it in interviews, and a lot of them didn't even put it on their personal statement, and they still got into medical school. So I would suggest that if you're doing it solely to get an edge over other candidates and you know maximize your chances of getting into medical school i wouldn't do it solely because the workload is so much and it's such an independent task that i believe the work doesn't outweigh the benefits of it in terms of maximizing your chances of getting into med school however the skills of an epq are definitely something that they do assess in university in terms of researching and all of that so i would you know if you want to get experience early that's fine another thing is if you have genuine interest in the topic that you're going to be studying as well that's another reason to do an epq because obviously if you want to know more about it that would be the perfect opportunity to do so but you know just ask yourself how much workload you can take because it is quite a lot of work so yeah cut the long story short if you're trying to get an edge in med school don't use an epq to do that if you haven't started it already but if you want to do it just for a genuine interest you can go ahead why did you choose medicine and not nursing so i presume that you've asked that because it's often a common interview question and rightly so obviously you have to know that the difference between two professionals that work within the same field so how i would go about answering that question and why i liked medicine personally is i loved the process of diagnosis in terms of um just the thought processes of problem solving, using the knowledge that you've learned to come to a resolution, well, not a resolution, but an answer to what a patient has, if that makes sense. That's something that nurses don't do. So I did admire that. Be careful with mentioning prescription powers, because I know that some nurses have the ability to prescribe now. But yeah, I would stick to that. And also the fact that doctors have quite an in-depth knowledge about different diseases that I don't think nurses cover in as much depth. How should you prepare for med school and interviews in terms of knowing anatomy? So I don't think they're going to ask you any specific anatomy question, especially not one that requires any sort of depth. So I would suggest getting to grips with your basic A-level anatomy and that would entail just knowing about the systems in a really, really broad sense. So like the digestive system, respiratory system, cardiovascular system, all of that. Um, and also knowing the general whereabouts of major organs like the liver, the kidney, the heart, the brain, all of that. In terms of preparing for med school, the reason why I wouldn't recommend doing any sort of pre-reading for anatomy per se is that um, different med schools have different ways that they do teach anatomy so you shouldn't condition your mind to learn anatomy in a particular way before you enter med school because your med school might want you to do it a bit differently and they also teach you right from the very beginning obviously from basic knowledge upwards so st george's gives us a very very broad overview of different systems and then really um breaks it down for us in semester two so i would say don't bother about doing any pre-reading for anatomy 
um, before med school, but if you are still interested, Netta's Atlas is really good. It has really good pictures. It also has an accompanying flashcards if you want to use those. And yeah, how many draft personal statements would we have to write approximately? So I wouldn't say there's like a number that you need to hit, but I personally wrote five different personal statements. Yeah because you're never going to believe that it's absolutely perfect and I think that's one thing that especially medical students have to know because we tend to be perfectionists but you're never ever going to be satisfied with your final version so I think the best thing that you can do is make sure that you're hitting all the key points so you have your hobbies in there you have your experience in there you have your reflections in there you have all of those things and just submit it you know I feel like there's only so satisfied perfectionists can be with their personal statement so yeah aim for more than one of course but if you do hear i want that's fine but make sure you also get people to proofread it as well not too many people of course but um if you can get your teacher and then also a parent if you want to but not too many people but once you've done that i think you're good to go do you feel you have ever faced any racism or prejudice that has potentially hindered your educational assignment so being honest, I haven't experienced overt hindrance in terms of my educational attainment. However, obviously, we as black people have to deal with microaggressions when we get to certain institutions. For example, I used to grapple with just what hairstyle am I going to do to interview so I don't come off as aggressive oftentimes you have to be very conscious about how you are talking so that you don't um, appear intimidating um, and all of that so yeah we're still making headway with that another problem that we are facing is a lot of clinical images are not people of color and therefore when we do end up qualifying to practice not a lot of um, doctors know what different clinical conditions look like with people, um, black people, for example, one common symptom that they like to tell us is, um, oh, the patient will look pale. Well, clearly I can't be overtly pale, G at me. So um, luckily, SGUL's finest, um, our former ACS president, Malone, has come up with a handbook called Mind the Gap and that covers a lot of um, clinical presentations of black people. So um, yeah, we're making headway, but there's still a long way to go. A massive thank you to Essie for agreeing to take part in this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it useful and I hope you learned something new. Also, let me know if your questions were answered and be sure to follow me on Instagram. It's at iwaisabar.com. And whilst you're at it, ask some questions and get involved in my Ask a Medic series. Remember, this is your opportunity to ask a medic whatever you want to know about their experience so far, so make the most of it. Subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on my next Ask a Medic video. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.